Basel down there. Anyway, I landed up exactly two minutes before I landed up here in my clinic. Thank you very much. Thank you so, for your tonight. Topic. Before we proceed, uh, 61 episodes and uh, say water. Suddenly I felt, hey, we have to talk something about saving water as well because it plays such an important uh, role in our day-to-day uh, -day life that many of us take things for granted. Now, when you are taking things for granted, uh, definitely we have to pay the penalty in terms of uh, either it can be diseases, environmental disasters, natural disasters will be there. So we have to face it. So at least uh, whoever is down here, probably I think uh, today's topic will give an insight of what we need to do. It's not only saving water. There are so many other things we all need to look into so that, you know, the future generation, you know, the very important I always tell is we need to leave a legacy to our future generation. We can't be selfish in, in uh, you know, acquiring things uh, just for ourselves. And uh, there's one beautiful story that, uh, especially when people are very rich and then they, they, are, they have the affordability. Now, what happens is uh, they will be very proudly telling, you know, I bought 10 acres of land here and I bought 10 acres of land there. I bought 25 acres of land there and totally, you know, uh, around 100 acres of land we have. This is proudly, I think, the human beings. We would have seen people telling that they bought the land. But on the other side, when you just turn over and then if the land has a, a way of talking, you know, what the land would have told is, look here, gentlemen, yes, uh, you have bought the land, fine. But do you know that I consumed, I took your grandfather, your great-grandfather and your parents as well into the same soil which you thought you owned it and you bought it but i have already taken them in who is the owner i am the owner maybe the next is i'll be taking you as well so in this universe nobody is saved and nobody is safe thinking that they are going to live forever on this planet earth saying that let's do something are we going to save or are we going to shave? You know, this is this is something very, very interesting because most of us, most of us, I would say 80 to 90 percent of the human population, what we are trying to do is we are trying to grab everything for our own self and uh, in, in thinking that it is just for me, my family and my kids, my kid and kin. This is what we always focus on our journey. And many times we see that in this pursuit of uh, acquiring things for ourselves, we are actually becoming greedier and greedier. And at the end of the day, the greed cannot last for very long. The nature takes over. Always the nature takes over. You can tell as God has taken over the universe, the cosmic, it doesn't matter. It's always the universe or the God or the <clears throat> this beautiful cosmic energy wins over us. It is, it is the truth of life at least from today onwards, let's do something. Why is that <clears throat> we need to look into the saving of water? Why do we Why do we need to look into this? I would like to just take a little behind so that it will be like a story for you also and understand how important is water and what do we do? And uh, okay, now 2022, of course, we have the future in front of us and today is um, already we have completed three months of our time on this planet Earth here in this year. Now, why should we start today? And especially we must teach our children that we need to save water. And it is something which I think every one of you will be wondering. Like the whole planet Earth, uh, our mother Earth is covered by two thirds of water and one third, one, four, one third is only land which is covering us. So we, just, we have so much of water, then why are we supposed to save water? We can use as much as water as possible. And then, of course, we can enjoy uh, in whatever little ways we want. But no, we have to look into saving water today. Why? Number one, let's go back a little bit. Maybe your great grandfathers or grandfather, you know, what happened was most of the civilization on planet Earth, it all started near the riverbed only most of the time most of the civilization human civilization if you look at they all expanded from near the river only 
because water forms such an important uh, integral part for our day to day life that uh, it we have to probably start a civilization near the river and this was long long years ago we were doing that so they saw water in the form of a river so that was nature and we had beautiful rivers flowing and then and of course people used to <clears throat> live near and then probably uh, those days if they didn't have vessel probably a little bit of canvas material or whatever little bit of the nature's uh, palm leaves they used to make vessels out of it and then probably collect water and then you know mud pots were there and then they used to collect water and then use it now do you think that when a person goes all the way walking and picks up the water and then comes back home and then you know you will be using the water very very sparingly because not only for drinking even for the other purposes of cleaning we would use it very very sparingly now this was our grandfather time <clears throat> they saw the water in the form of a river and it was nature they were listening to the flow of the water you know and the birds chipping and the trees down there and you know kids playing down near the riverside and people swimming some people bathing all these were all these activities were all going on so it was a very beautiful time those days but then later on came down where our fathers what happened when they started shifting down away from the mainstream of river what they had to do they were not able to you know go 10 15 kilometers every day to bring water so they finally what happened is they dug up and then they found that even the water was coming out of the well and so they started getting the wells being dug and then they started using well water <clears throat> now these well waters the quality of the water uh, was more or less more or less very very portable very clean because when you see the water filtered into the earth and going down deep inside what happens is the water starts seeping down through the mother earth and then of course it comes down there and the water will automatically how much of a water you take out from the well the water still flows up because there is always a water little bit of water clean water being seeped and you would have seen in your ancestral properties that the the well water was very very clean and of course i still remember in my grandmother's house you know the municipal people used to come down put some fishes into the water and go especially the well uh, these small fishes probably they used to eat all the algae and keep the water very clean and uh, and what the beautiful part of is this water we we don't need to filter we just directly drink it and use it for consumption for our uh, cooking of food as well that was the situation of well water those days because if you see the number of houses in that particular village, village was very less and there was one uh, huge well down in the center of the sea that particular village so that everybody goes down there and picks up the water from the uh, village well <clears throat> now this is how your great grandpa your fathers probably saw it now <clears throat> then came your and my time basically of course we were living in the cities and then what happened we started seeing the water tap uh, no doubt there was well in my home there in my grandmother's parents but still we used to get a, a piped water through the tap we used to get water so this is where we had the facility of not even going outside the house to pick up water and come back now when you look at this particular situation now this is where uh, even here uh, let me go back once again to the well huh? Like imagine every day you're going to take around 10 buckets of water for your home or family of four or five people. Now, how much of water do you think you will probably use it for bathing? <clears throat> Maybe around half a bucket or three-fourths of a bucket. You will, even there, you will use it very, very sparingly. And for drinking, there'll be one uh, pot of water. And all of us, we used to drink that water. And then we were well hydrated that time. Now, this is something which you need to notice that we were well hydrated that time. We didn't have any problem. And the moment we feel thirsty, we used to go drink water. Now, so the water saving was not a big issue during the even the well time because we were using the water very sparingly and hardly we used to waste water that time. And uh, during the situation of those, those days where the well life we are talking, even our toilet system were probably, it was an open air system where, you know, uh, thing uh, for the toilet things were dark and then you know we, it was it was a little far away and then of course you can use only a 
or probably a mug of water or a jug of water for even cleaning your situation. But then came the tap water, which is uh, the municipality had the facility of giving us this system of piped water, wherein we can use uh, drinking water at your home. Like always they say, you know, do your business from home. In the same way, <clears throat> like even the internet, you can do everything from home, right? The same way when the tap water came in. Now, this is where we started using a little more water than we used to use it, especially when we used to go and pick up from the well, because the facility was there. But here, what you used to under, what was the situation was, the water supply was not for 24 hours, you know. Every day, probably the municipality used to leave us for two hours or three hours of water. That's it. So what will happen even there, we used to have drums and all, collect the water and keep it down there. <clears throat> so even then, we were using the water sparingly. But the time when water supply was constant and then, you know, 24 hours of water supply, like what you and I are getting today, I think we are wasting a lot of water irrespective of whatever you say, we are wasting a lot of water because the way you we use for one family of three to four people, definitely we are wasting a lot of water. Now, this is still acceptable, right? Uh, you are talking about the tap water. Now, what will happen? Now, this is something, of course, we are already seeing here. What is that? Our children, they're seeing the bottled water. Now, last time, I don't remember, uh, we carrying the water bottles along uh, to the office and all. Very rare. I'm talking about 30, 40 years ago. I think the water was there in the office also. People used to drink that limited water. But now, the bottling system has come. So, our children are all seeing the bottled water now but definitely a time will come this is going to change the reason is there will be scarcity of water and definitely we all at least the future generation uh, will face a lot of problems because of uh, lack of water on one side on the other side oxygen this is another area which i am uh, in my medical field i'm looking at probably in the future, people, we all might have to carry an uh, oxygen cylinder on our back and wherever we go. And uh, because uh, this, uh, the, your uh, environment will be so much polluted that there is no way that you can you know, breathe in that polluted air. So you, you might need an oxygen cylinder being carried away. Now, here coming back to the bottled water. So already we are seeing the bottled water. Now, wherever you go, you also don't carry the water. Many of us will see, just go to the 99 market, 7-Eleven, just buy one bottle of water and drink it up. Yes, bottled water. Now, this will probably be a situation. It can come, I don't know. But I'm just visualizing that we may face the situation that our grandchildren may see water in the form of capsules. So that means you go to the... Uh, uh, wherever uh, the sunrise shop and then ask for, okay, how many capsules you want, maybe 100 capsules, 200 capsules or 300 capsules of water. So you will be, you will be given uh, capsules of water. I think uh, you all would have seen uh, our detergents uh, right now in the market. We do have capsule detergents. Have you seen that? Recently, when I went to the uh, giant also, I did see all capsules, you know, you just have to put one, two capsule, one, I think one capsule into your uh, washing drum, you're washing this one, and that one capsule will wash your, all your clothing. It's just one capsule, you know. When detergent has already come in the form of capsule, and last time it was in the detergent, a five liter can, then the powder was there. But now, uh, then the concentrated came. Now, I think in the future, we all probably might have to buy water in the form of capsules. We do not know it can happen. But there is some uh, something which is very serious. I think we all need to look into it and we all need to uh, <clears throat> a little bit uh, probably low, uh, you know, work on this uh, saving of water so that we can do something. As an individual, let's all do this. Now, finally, the future generation may not see water. Now, why? Because if you see maybe in another 100 years, I'm just talking, maybe in the 100 years, the countries might be fighting for water, you know. If the moment one country knows that this country has got a water supply, I think they will start bombarding, like unlike the Ukraine and uh, Russia war, which is going on right now, uh, there can be situation in the next 100 years that countries will fight over water. 
and uh, it won't be for anything else you know it will it will it won't be for money it will be for water and people like neighbors if one person has water uh, uh, in his house probably the burglars will come uh, swindle the water and take away the water it can be a situation in the next 100 years probably there so what we need to do can we save water if we can do this you and i start this particular project where in at home let us start it at home slowly so that in whatever little ways let us be a contributor to this beautiful universe and we are all visitors yes everybody knows that we are all a visitor on this planet earth but uh, why are we like this uh, so selfish in getting everything for us so we need to change that so saving water is very very important so in that way i have a few tips what you need to look into is look into it <clears throat> it's only a a sharing i'm doing and you all might be intelligent enough to know better than all this uh, whatever i'm talking but look into it now turn off the faucet of uh, while brushing your teeth this is a very common mistake we do you just open the tap in the wash basin and then we'll be going on brushing our teeth and the water will be just flowing on and especially men when they are shaving uh, this is also another habit which most of the men have is they will open the tap and then go on shaving now this will happen between 3 to 5 minutes just imagine for 5 minutes how many liters of water are wasted just going into the wash basin this is how uh, we are doing probably we need to uh, save this situation by switching off or probably use a mug of water and then like my grandfather used to do that they used to have one small cup of uh, uh, warm water and then dip the blade and then you know shave and put even the shaving cream and all just use the same one small cup of water they used to use now just imagine one cup of water is only 50 ml of uh, water you are taking but the moment you open your tap you know how much of water are you wasting of course we are all wasting a lot of water the second maybe i do not know but i think using a washing machine or a dishwasher what do we do even if there are two cloths if you are going to switch on the machine and then you know uh use use the water definitely it will use a minimum of 25 to 30 liters of water for washing now during the if your if your clothing is not sufficient in a full load uh, definitely we are wasting water that is another area then of course use of uh, low flow shower head now this is definitely available in the market so look at shower heads which you know it's like in a mist or a, it's in a smaller form of faucets which are with like small aerators wherein the water is uh, with high pressure but there is less of water that means you will be using less of water in fact when you are using uh, a shower directly from our uh, water connecting system we are using more water but if you are using a bucket of water i think probably we will be using lesser amount of water but what to do we are all used to using showers so i would prefer if there is a situation where we can actually reduce we should look into it and of course i have seen in a many places like even in my uh, shop lot down here i see the water just goes on flowing out near the meter i will be thinking why these guys don't want to repair it but none of them are bothered you know they just put one bucket down there and imagine in 24 hours how much of water would have been leaking out of that of course the meter runs and then he the, the person lower down guy is paying the bill but the question is why are you wasting the water now who is supposed to go and tell these guys now this is where wherever whenever there is a leak uh, leakage in your water piping system you better rectify it and then you know clear it up as early as possible i think in feng shui also they do say that if there is a leakage of water even your money will be started uh, leaking in the same way you will be losing money and uh, of course uh, this particular toilet system when we where we are using a flushing system uh, i did see that in japan they have a a uh, wash basin like system wherein you know you wash your hand and then the water goes down into the system wherein you you it gets filtered and goes down there and then when you uh, use the system and automatically the it is the filtered water of whatever you are washing your hands is used in the toilet so that is that is also one of the saving and the last time i when i was staying in a penthouse i used to collect rain water so rain water harvesting is another area which can be used especially for your uh, plants and uh, you know washing your garage or washing washing your outside of your home and even uh, watering your grass outside your garden outside you can use our uh, nature our rain water as well so that is another way of uh, saving water like you see don't over uh, water your lawn 
and water during the peak periods and installation of the rain sensors for irrigation. All this can be done and rainwater harvesting can be done. You know, plant a rain garden for catching the storm uh, water runoff from your roof, drive away and other hard surfaces. No, these are all small, small things you should be able to look into. And then they do say that you have to monitor water usage every month. If you see how much are using, most of the time uh, it will be an average uh, usage only, but sometimes you might be using a, a little more water than you require. For this, what we all need to understand and do is uh, start with your children, let them know. You have to, before you even tell your children how to save water, you need to do all that because children are seeing you, observing you, what you do. So you do something and you don't, uh, you want your children to follow uh, what you're doing. So you have to practice that. So it's something very, very important, especially as parents, we need to uh, definitely uh, look into this. And of course, sharing the knowledge about saving of water, conservation, efficiency among your neighbors. And that uh, we need to have a proper rapport with our neighbors as well which is also a very, very important role as a human being on this planet Earth. Many of us are uh, not in that uh, situation where we talk to our neighbors, but I think we all need to change the way we are living. We need to live the same brotherhood that then, you know, like we need to love each other, you know, we need to spread the love uh, with every human being we see. Now, like this, there are a lot of other tips also, probably I didn't want to bore you by giving you too much of saving the water but i think you all need to but the, my just uh, the reason was just to tickle your brain that why not today we'll we'll start off with this and then start moving forward now the irony as i told you the irony of uh, human beings is with all this we dig our own grave yes or no we dig our own grave because this is what we are doing we are we are uh, very selfish in whatever ways we are <clears throat> in fact if you look at the city encroaching the forest. Now, if you're encroaching the forest, what will happen to the forest? Automatically, the animals down there will automatically have to come. Like uh, last week, I, I came to understand one of my friend who was staying in Puchong. He did came, uh, share uh, information from that particular area that there was a python which uh, swallowed a man and he was half eaten inside. And then finally, this uh, his friend went and saw this half the body was already inside the python eaten up. Now, this is happening in Puchong. I'm talking about Puchong, which is not too far away. It is still in the city limits. And uh, so in that way, why all this is happening is because we are actually encroaching the nature. We are encroaching the forest. We are encroaching the animals' shelters. And uh, imagine we are building uh, concrete buildings and where should the birds go and live? We don't have any space. <laughs> Now, in fact, what has happened is in the past, uh, I think two, uh, three, four days ago, there was one pigeon. Uh, it has already hatched his uh, beautiful uh, little beings and then they already started. So every six months, I see that the pigeons all the way come back to my home and they start reproducing and then, you know, they are expanding the family. And I don't know why uh, I also don't like to disturb them. It's six months, once two, two birds, they will come, they will hatch, they will grow and they'll fly off. And I feel it's a little bit of uh, support I'm giving for these beautiful birds because they, are, they need trees for them to go on uh, tree or a place for them to, uh, you know, expand their family. Only we are uh, building our own homes and then we expand our family, but they also need to expand their family, isn't it? So in that way, uh, one of the most, we all would have heard of cancer, uh, which is spreading very, very rapidly. But if you look at the cancer of this planet Earth, you know, do you know who is uh, the deadliest cancer on this planet Earth? It is we human beings. We are worse than cancer cells, actually. The way we encroach, the way we, we swindle the nature's, uh, nature's being, beingness, the way we spoil the nature's uh, uh, virginity, all these are all because of human beings. So we are deadlier than cancer cells. But I would say, yes, we may be, but I think whoever is down here in this group right now today, let's all change. Let's all be a contributing factor in, in this uh, life path and be a contributor and then see whatever little we can do and then we start moving forward. 
So what is happening is in the pursuit of saving water. This is something little I had to take you into back to terrors, right? So what I wanted to message was in the pursuit of saving water, we should not uh, we should uh, we should not land up in dehydration by drinking less of water. Now this is another part of problem which we are all facing is we have water but we don't want to drink. But maybe in the future, people won't have water, but they will see, still face a situation of dehydration. But today, at least we have water to drink. So please drink sufficient amount of water. And uh, we have a wonderful uh, device with us called the terahertz device, which is uh, resonating the water. So why not? We should always uh, look when God has blessed us to with this beautiful opportunity of drinking a, a terahertz water, resonated water. It's a blessing for us. So we need to look into that also because hydration plays a very, very important role in our journey of life. So in that way, uh, every one of us uh, should uh, be drinking this water. Now, many times whenever uh, I, I speak to people, the, the first question, uh, like today morning, I had one person who came and uh, he already bought the device. But cute, very cutely, uh, for one year he has been using the device and then suddenly he's coming and asking, Doctor, uh, how do I explain this water if someone is going to ask, uh, uh, why should I drink this terahertz water or maybe how do I recommend this water? So I said, it's very simple, not a big deal at all. Uh, so you, when you ask, uh, do you all drink water? The first question, when you ask, do you all drink water? They will say, yes, we do drink water. Then the second question you can ask is, uh, okay, what kind of water are you drinking? So most of us in today's uh, journey, what they will say is they might be uh, drinking a filtered water, especially uh, a filtered uh, Kuku or uh, Kove or any other water filtration system they might have. And I think most of the human beings are uh, intelligent enough that they, are, they do have a filtered system of water. Now, once they are drinking a filtered system water, then the next question you can ask them is, hey, do you know uh, the water has a molecular size? They will say they, they may know, but they might say, sorry, we don't know. So you should say, if you are drinking a direct, probably a Kowei water or a filtered water from the system, tap water. If it is a tap water, the molecular structure is around 120. Now, if it is a filtered water, probably it will be around 80. 80 is the size of the water molecule or the frequency you can say it is 80 hertz. That is the frequency of the water molecule. Now, then you should ask them, okay, fine, very good. Then the next question you can ask them is, does your water have antibacterial effect? Is there an antibacterial? Then they will ask you, what do you mean by antibacterial? What is antibacterial is basically when there is any bacteria coming in contact with this particular water, it will kill that bacteria. That's all. That's why it's called antibacterial. You all might be knowing uh, what is an antibiotic, right? Antibiotic is basically an a chemical which will go and kill the bacteria. If it is an antiviral, we call it as an antiviral drug. Correct? Like in the same way, there are antiviral, antifungal. So the second property, first property you told the terahertz water has got an antibacterial. Then the second quality you can tell them is it has an antiviral property. That means it can definitely help in terms of viral infections. Now, of course, you have to be a little careful because some intelligent beings, they will think that the moment they get COVID and they are going to drink this water and then everything will be cleared. I totally would like to let you know that, yes, it will help them to bring down the infection rate. But how well is your body protected? How well is your body immune system? These are all plays a very, very, it is not just the water alone which will protect you from uh, being an antiviral. But why do we say it is antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal is because what they did was our company picked up the water and tested for the bacteria, tested for the virus, tested for the fungus. Now what they found is they put it in the petri dish and then when they found that all the organisms will die. So that means it becomes an antibacterial, antifungal and antiviral. Beautiful, isn't it? So already three properties you have told them. Then you can tell them it has got an anti-radiation properties. Now anti-radiation properties means what will happen is, if at all, if you're drinking this water, just as an example, you're walking in the sun. Definitely, there is a little bit of radiation. Now I'm talking about the environmental radiation. Now, if you're going to drink Terra's water for a period of minimum three to six months, 
definitely there is a little bit of protection it will give you for the radiation in terms of protecting you from the environmental radiation that will be there now other than that your body has got around 50 trillion cells right now if you drink uh, probably two liters of water do you think that the two liters of water immediately or three liters of water will go and fill all your system and make it into a full-fledged terahertz water uh, inside no it will slowly go inside and some water will come out so, so we do not know exactly how much of terahertz water will be absorbed and then how much of uh, the water will sustain its property as an antibacterial or antiviral or anti-radiation we do not know but the laboratory testing has proven that it has got all the properties so that is good enough so the fourth property is anti-radiation uh, then anti-aging anti-aging means what when you go on drinking this water people will suddenly ask and tell you hey you look much younger you know compared to last time how is that now that means if you are drinking the water continuously, there is some anti-aging effect. That means why do they say is anti-aging is very, very simple understanding. For this, it's not a rocket science. You don't need to do your MBBS. Okay. Now, every day there are cells dying, isn't it? If the cells are dying, they need to rejuvenate. Now, just imagine yourself, the cells are dying and the new cells are supposed to be born. If the new cells are, cells are supposed to be born, the new cells need water. That is the first thing. The new cells need nutrition. Correct? Now, if you're drinking terrace water for a period of three to six months, that means the water, terrace water goes inside, then whatever food you're eating, the nutrition also goes inside. That means this particular new cell formation is more healthier. It can probably, if this cell can is supposed to live for 10 days, it will live for 10 days. But if the nutrition is not there, the same cell which was supposed to say for 10 days, will probably for two, three days and die off. So automatically what will happen is your aging will reduce, isn't it? So in the same way, when you are talking about anti-aging is, this is the simplest way you can understand that. That means the new reproduction of cell is so good that it can stay a little longer for a longer time. If I'm talking about cells, do you think when you as a huge body with trillions of cells, you also will be able to have the same effect of anti-aging. Now, other than that, the angulation is opened up uh, between 106 to 109 degrees. Now, if the moment angulation opens up, the advantage is number one, if your water is hard, it will become soft water. Good enough, isn't it? Soft water is easy for you to absorb. The main difference you should understand between hard water and soft water. If you use a hard water, when you use a soap, the lather will be very less. That is hard water. On the other side, if you're talking about soft water, when you use the same soap, the same quantity, there will be so much of lather. I think many of you would have tested, use our terahertz water, and then when you use the soap, you can see a lot of lather coming in. Why? Because once you resonate the water, it becomes uh, a soft water. That is another advantage. Okay. Now, next, the moment the angulation is opened up, it becomes a live water. If it is a live water, all your cells are so happy that they will say cheers and then they will start picking up that water on one side, number one. Number two is all the minerals, very, very important. We need almost 70 to 80 nutrients, micronutrients you can call it as, minerals you can call. It. All these will be able to be picked up by this water molecule and then transported into your cellular system. So that means if it is a hard water, your absorption of mineral is less. If it is a soft water, the absorption of minerals is much more. Good enough, isn't it? So in that way, there are a lot of advantages when you are drinking this particular water. Now, one of the most important uh, feature of this particular uh, resonated water is when you're drinking this water on a regular basis, See, uh, there is something like uh, switching off the gene and switching on the gene. You know, there are two things happening. Now, when you are talking about switching off the gene, that means there are bad genes. You need to switch them off. And the good genes, you need to switch it on. When you are drinking this water, definitely your good genes will be switched on. But at the same time, how come the uh, bad genes or the genes which is supposed to be switched off when you are drinking this water can happen is... See, uh, this are also is not a rocket science. Just visualize that you have a DNA. 
Now the DNA is functioning inside and the job of the DNA is it will receive the information from the environmental, from the food and whatever you're, you're eating, drinking, everything. The message will go inside the DNA and it is stored. Now, for example, if there is a lot of radiation happening in the environmental and that lead, maybe let's assume that you have a lead poison, lead going inside your body. Now, the lead will go inside the body and then it will go inside your system, wherein it will go inside your, your cell level. The moment it goes into your cell level, the DNA will look up and then say, who is this guy? Huh? I don't even see him, but why is he inside now? But the lead will say, Nola, I already came in, I bypassed everything and I'm already inside your cell now, I'm already here. So what happens is he will give all the wrong information to the DNA saying that now lead is something wherein your detoxification will be delayed. It can actually block your hormonal uh, system, messaging of the hormones. Maybe, for example, if there is a lead poisoning, one of the simplest example I can give you is uh, you, you, you may not be able to have a child. Why? Because there is a disruption of your hormones, your estrogen and progesterone. And for the men, it will be testosterone. This can be affected. So in that way, what will happen is when this wrong signals are being taken up by the DNA, now, this wrong signal needs to be corrected, isn't it? Now, if needs to be corrected, let me tell you, it is not just by drinking this water, this DNA will go and change. But this is one of the factors. It can go and help the DNA to rewrite the messages, whatever wrongly it has written. Okay. Now, this is where on a long run, when you're drinking this water, definitely it will be an advantage. But at the same time, it is a uh, I would say it's a package we all need to understand, right? From your mindset, to your day-to-day -day habits, to your waking up in the morning, your breathing technique, the food what you eat, you know, how, how good is your nutrition, all these play a very, very important role, okay? So in that way, just don't think that just because I'm telling you that this water can go and rewrite your DNA doesn't mean that you go on just drinking water and finally don't call up and tell me, doctor, you only told all my DNA will change here. Nothing has happened. It is not going to happen overnight, but continuously drinking this water with all the other factors definitely will help you to become more healthier. Very simple is you will become more healthier. So in the same way, I would request all the youngsters down here who are all youngsters here, Start drinking this water, start a healthy lifestyle, stop smoking, stop drinking. And uh, of course, stop visiting all these pubs. And it is okay once in a while you want to do, but please avoid all these unnecessary. It's not going to help you. You have to save yourself. Today, I'm talking about saving the water, but I am telling you, you better save yourself today because in the next 20, 30 years, you will be facing a lot more problems than what I faced or what my father or grandfather faced. You will be facing more challenges with more pollution, with less water, with uh, uh, less nutritious food, with more of processed food and a lot of uh, inoculated. That means through the injections, there'll be a lot of things coming in we do not know. So at least for now, start changing your life, make it more healthier. And one more very, very important. Don't you think youngsters, you all want to have a healthy child for you once you get married you need to have a child and you need to have a healthy child right so why shouldn't you not take responsibility in avoiding all things which is going to cause a problem for you why do you want to produce a child and then finally uh, go from pillar to post from from, uh, from one uh, hospital to another hospital looking for a cure like for example now you would see that a lot of parents are suffering with autistic children now, with, with this autistic children, do you know how much of headache these parents are going through? It is a pain for them because on one side, they'll be working. On the other side, with this kind of autistic children, they need to take the child to a, a, a counselor. They are supposed to take them for a proper training. They are supposed to give them special education, special training, special nutrition. All this is costing you money. Now, when this is a situation, why not we take a responsibility? We should take a responsibility. So youngsters down there, please take responsibility and please share this with your friends and let them know also, stop, stop and stop doing things which is not favorable for you. You have to stop it today. Now, this is where we all need to uh, work on a different platform, start working on a healthier atmosphere. See, I, whatever I am talking to you today is I do say that I have taken the whatever the responsibility as a human being on this planet Earth in whatever little ways I am doing. I don't smoke, I don't drink, whatever ways I am planning and I'm doing, I'm healthy as of today. 
but i would have known the next 10 years 20 years what kind of atmosphere i am facing what kind of diseases i might i don't know but as of today i am healthy if i am healthy today definitely i think i will be healthy tomorrow also because i am working for the today very well so whatever you do today is going to be your future so start looking at that and then start moving forward so water is a very very important integral part of our existence that means you are going to live on this planet earth and drink sufficient amount of water now do you want to gulp the water or sip the water i would prefer please sip the water now there are two situation one is a big molecule another one is a small molecule so as i was telling you if you are drinking the normal tap water or other filtered system it is or a bigger molecule of course going entire inside your cell will be a, a little issue down there but the smaller molecule is much more easier for it to penetrate inside and then hydrate your cell your cells as well as your body now you would have seen that when you go on spraying the uh, terra's water on your face Uh, i think our george does this very frequently i think he does a fantastic advertisement where you know you can see he just uses a water spray very frequently and that's something very cute of him because now this is what when people see him they will think what is this man doing why is he spraying that now this is where you can see his face so bright you know of course there are a lot of pollutions coming onto your face whenever you are traveling but when you spray this water this will actually bring down the free radical damage also when you spray the water on your face it will prevent those toxins going inside your body is intelligent enough to clear the toxins outside so when it is a small molecule it's much more easier and when you are sipping the water is always better rather than gulping the water inside your body now terra's resonating device is a necessity in today's polluted environment now very important for those of you down here you can only resonate the water if it is filtered and clean potable water it should be filtered there is no excuse and nobody can use a direct tap water and resonate it please don't do that do not collect the water directly from the tap and then even if you boil it and then cannot resonate you cannot there is no no way so whoever doesn't have a filtration system initially i may agree with whatever the company is giving you that small filtration system which is given along with the device it's acceptable but let me be very frank in my home i am using two big filters outside and then one filter inside what our terra has just given one filtration system now i can see a crystal clear water coming out of the filtration system now when i resonate the taste of the water also is different in fact last time i did have only one membrane filter and i was not very happy with the system i don't know suddenly two weeks ago i felt uh, this water is not good i need to change so what i did instead of changing the whole unit what i asked the guy was can i add on to the existing filter he said no problem because that is anyway a membrane filter so there also the water gets filtered and comes back to this particular system and so there is a second filtration system happening so i think i would request every one of you you should invest for a clean drinking water if possible put at least one or two filtration system outside and then one inside will be definitely a good idea for you all to move forward now this is basically a very very simple light device right terahertz is a light device what they are using the terra the way what they use is the terahertz resonance and it's a beautiful device and then of course terahertz company is the first one to bring out this but there are competitors coming down in the market much smaller much easier with the digital variation there are so many things coming out but for me this is much more easier because this is the first thing came into me in my journey of life so i am using it it is fantastic good enough if there are other products coming in let it come it's still okay and such of those people who are going to buy that it's their problem and it is their requirement let them do but this one is good enough for us to move forward the terahertz resonator is good enough now the beautiful system as i was talking to you is 7 point hertz is the uh, the frequency the molecular structure is 2 nanometers then very important i miss this particular point the viscosity of water is minus 680 i don't think there is any other water in the market which has got this amount of 
the lowest viscosity there is no water available higher the viscosity better the slippery system for the water now when you are talking about minus 680 it is like you are using a fully synthetic engine oil it's something like that a fully synthetic engine oil is only for the newer engines we all use in our cars isn't it it's something like that so that means the traveling of the water inside your system is much much easier so with all these amazing properties of this beautiful uh, device and the water we have so what we should do definitely we need to talk to people definitely we need to let people know that there is something so beautiful and so uh, nice available and why not if they cannot buy the device at least give them the water and let them drink the water so drinking water what you need to do are you going to drink water for curing any disease i would say no don't do that you want to be healthy please drink this water that's it the moment you start drinking water just because i told you it has got an antibacterial effect antiviral now immediately don't think that just because you are drinking this water you may not fall sick but frankly speaking i have been uh, in this uh, beautiful one and a half years of uh, drinking terrace water i never fell sick for the past one it's not that just one and a half years before that also i was very healthy but what i want to share is with this covid around there are so many people every other people you see they are telling in spite of vaccination also they are still getting covid so what what's a the problem there that means their immune system is not good their mindset very important huh? mindset also needs to be very very positive what i do is when i drink water i say thank you so much to the water because god given this beautiful water the moment it goes inside i just visualize that as i drink the water it goes inside my system and then it starts healing and it does all the work what it is supposed to do you know i don't need to instruct the water what it needs to do the water knows what it needs to do where it needs to go and hydrate where it needs to carry the oxygen where it needs to carry the nutrients where it needs to detox all this the water molecule knows i am not so intelligent better than a water molecule the water molecule in god's creation is much intelligent they know what to do our cells are much more intelligent the best doctor in the whole universe is your own cell it's your own system inside your own immune system is the best doctor so with all this start drinking water for becoming healthier now by chance you have a disease let it be diabetes let it be blood pressure let it be heart issue it's okay but your focus should be you're drinking the water to make your body healthy you drink the water make your body healthy so what will happen there are unhealthy cells you are talking about diabetes let's assume that there are unhealthy cells now if your healthy cells are going to increase in number don't you think the healthy cells can go and handle the unhealthy cells and tell them hey look now enough of you being unhealthy and all we have come over now we will take over and we will do all the job we will eat all the sugar what this guy is eating and then we will bring down the glucose level all these the your normal cells can do that you know once they are healthy they can do but an unhealthy cell cannot do that because the health, unhealthy cell doesn't have an oxygen doesn't have nutrition doesn't know how to detox all this problem they are facing so when you are looking at a healthy cell so increase the number of healthy cells in your body by drinking terrace water by eating the right food by, by proper breathing techniques breathing properly consuming more of uh, taking in more of oxygen going for regular exercise making your body little more flexible than before all this you have to do it so always look at healthier part rather than disease part stop looking at diseases because the moment you get into a disease the water will think why this man is thinking about uh, curing the disease i am here to make the body healthier isn't it so start looking at from a different angle different perspective so that you heal yourself and say thanks to your body you are alive on this planet earth how many of you down here uh, thank your body from morning until now it is almost uh, 850 how many times have you thanked your body from morning until now one time two times do you know that you are supposed to pray five times visualizing your death five times there is one country they teach you how to die and they teach you five times you are supposed to think about death that means leaving the body and going this is this is they train your mind but none of us are looking into death because we all think we are going to live here for another 100 days 200 days you know only living we are thinking and we are doing all the wrong things under the sun no we have to change 
we all have to look at look from a different angle start looking at how to become more healthier how am i going to help myself you be selfish you talk to yourselves and tell hey look i'm going to drink this water i'm going to eat the right nutritious food and i'm going to do this for you you become healthier and you go handle the diseases whether it is a cancer whether it is any other disease it doesn't matter your cells are intelligent and they know what to do with the cancer cells you think they cannot handle the cancer cells you you think your immune system cannot handle your uh, cancer cells they can handle it so why don't you trust your cells why don't you trust your body you should start trusting your body so first trust yourself that you are a beautiful being on this planet earth here on a purpose on this lamb mother earth and do something do something your job is not just going on for your own self do something for this planet earth do something for your body work for it and move forward because most of us are working for others earning some money and at the end of the day by the time we finish our journey we are half dead and after that you want to recoup also you just cannot so wake up it's time enough move forward make yourself much more healthier now saying this save water for your future generation this is a humble request from me to all of you down there teach your children right from the childhood not to waste water and to utilize what is necessary and unnecessary things do not do not waste it be it food be it your clothing be it your water be it your space also do not occupy a too big a space like for example there are people having big big bedrooms isn't it but how much of bed what's the size of your bed it's a small 6 uh, feet by 6 feet maximum is good enough one you can have a bedroom of even 50 feet also it doesn't matter but because you cannot be rolling from left to right or uh, north to south no isn't it you will be still sleeping in the same place so at the end of the day how much of a big house you have how much of a you will finally land up in the 6 feet by 6 feet the ground which is permanently booked for us once we leave this earth but if you can leave a legacy on this planet or do you think they will remember you people should remember you for your legacy of what goodness have you left on this planet earth and god not the diseases what you had and then what you die people of course they will tell you this person died because of cancer this person died because of accident all this is there but we can overcome all those situation by our day to day activities which we do uh, in a little little manner Uh, i think little drops of rain make a mighty ocean the same way start today doing small little things and i think the future generation will remember you every moment of whatever you have contributed on to this planet earth saying that very important is nature is a preacher <clears throat> and life is a teacher now these two are wonderful uh, message from this universe so you need to understand when nature is preaching you you better listen to it what does it preach one tsunami can teach you what it can do one earth can can teach you what it can do and in the same way day to day life your life as you're walking through you just imagine you don't have water to drink your life it is so difficult without life with thirsty can you see how many people on this planet earth are suffering so life also teaches you every moment of life now between these two your preaching and teaching what is that we are getting connected is your vibration have a good vibration very very important having a good vibration you need to have good thoughts and your memories has to be very very good that means what good memory you put is the future but what bad memory you collected from the past it's still okay erase it up don't carry on don't go on talking about the past memories every now and then and then make your life miserable never talk about yesterday i always when whenever do i do my consultation when people go on talking about the past i'll tell them stop i don't need your whole stories tell me what is happening today talk about it of course i do need a little bit of history of your past but that is not going to do any big deal for me i rather go for today so just for today what shall i do so in that way you also should start working on just for today if i am happy my life will be beautiful and if yesterday was a very not a very favorable day for you it's still okay but it is finished you cannot go back and change that so why do you want to waste your time and talking about the yesterday so if you are talking about yesterday i am telling you don't do it people are there talking about 10 years ago 15 years ago 20 years ago what happened this happened that happened 
all the stories they'll be and they are rewinding it so beautifully and trying to you know recollect it please stop doing that recollecting of the old memory we don't need it build a new memory build a new uh, uh, start uh, start uh, i would say writing your hard disk with good memories happy endings you know whenever you end your day like for example today we are ending what is that you're going to say be thankful for the universe that today we had a Tara's uh, meeting down here and uh, dr prabhu is here with all those beautiful souls around us we all are gathered here and thanks to the zoom uh, guys who introduced this zoom meeting and thanks to george thanks to brian thanks to lee madam like this everybody plays a very very important role in this particular situation and from morning probably your food say thanks to the food who brought you the food thanks to your parents thanks to your friends thank to your relatives thanks to your brothers and sisters when you start thanking and feeling the gratitude, don't you think when you're going for going to the bed, you will have any kind of revenge? Do you will you have any kind of uh, uh, aggressiveness in your mind? No, you'll feel so happy. And at the end of the day, when you're so happy, when you sleep, what will happen? You will sleep like a baby. When you sleep like a baby, you will never dream. It's a beautiful journey. So you should have a dreamless sleep and have a fantastic journey and a fantastic week ahead. With this, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to save or shave or save the future. So saying this, thank you very much and hope that I today's uh, message I have given something to tickle your brain. I would call it as a brain tickler. Thank you very much. And over to you, Madam Lee. Thank you so much, Dr. Prabhu. Wow, it's a fantastic sharing tonight. Yes is really uh, uh, touching. We are surrounded by two thirds of water, but billions of people lack water. Clean, fresh water, right, doctor? Yep. And the clean, fresh water is an essential ingredient for a healthy human life. But according to the statistic, more than 1 billion people lack access to water, especially clean water nowadays. And the news also broadcasted that by 2025, two thirds of the world's population may be facing water shortages. There's a call to help save and fund uh, the water and the sanitation for children, especially in the poverty area. So you can make a difference, save water, use them wisely and thriftily, right, doctor? Yep. Yeah, doctor also mentioned uh, our grandchildren might consume water in capsules. Oh, how scary it is. Yeah, so let's take heed to what doctor suggested, use water and save water, save water, save it. And thanks, Doctor, your tonight, uh, you mentioned about uh, the, uh, all the functions and the properties of terahertz water. It is so a uh, clear explanation. I hope every one of us would take back the message from Dr. Prabhu. And also, you can watch again uh, tonight's uh, episode 61. Uh, at our company, uh, Facebook page, and also the YouTube. I yearn to you, do watch it again. I assure you sure can have a better understanding and impact as you could also share, share it to your partner, your family members, your children, or your friends. Uh, let them also be benefited. Uh, and thank you uh, so much, doctor. Yes, uh, there are a few questions here tonight. Uh, someone asked um, that he has asked his doctor who treated his stroke. And the doctor uh, in the clinic, but none say water can ward off the build up cholesterol. Water cannot help. No, actually, what is happening is if you're talking about uh, 
the fat molecule being broken up, right? This is what they are looking at. Uh, when you look at the cellular level, I think our cells, the moment you give them the nutrition in the form of the right uh, amount of water and the nutrition, the cells will metabolize this particular fat or you can talk about proteins or carbohydrates, it doesn't matter. Your body can do the job. We don't need to give an instruction to our cell what to do. But definitely, uh, when you look at, uh, this is another beautiful example I would like to give is, you just put a few drops of water on the table there and then spray our terrace water. And then when you wipe this, what happens is, this terrace water, it emulsifies the oil. So when it can emulsify the oil, this is what is the question is trying to ask you. When you are consuming the water, will it dissolve the fat? This is what he's yes. trying to ask. But what we need to understand is the mechanism is not the same. It's like, if that is the case, so easy, isn't it? You just spray the water onto the fat and then it will dissolve. It won't happen like that. But when you drink the water, your body will automatically increase the metabolism. See, the very important right, to dissolve the fat, your metabolism must be increased. The moment your metabolism increase, your fat will go down. Now, one of the simplest example I can give you is people with hyperthyroidism. You know, that means the thyroid function is very high. It's called hyperthyroidism. You will see them very thin, you know, because their basal metabolic rate is very high. So it will go on eating the fat. On the other side, low thyroid, that means the thyroid, the hypothyroid, you can see them all very fat, you know. Why? Because collection of fat will be there. So yeah. at the end of the day, your fat metabolism depends on, uh, on your basal metabolic rate. So when you drink water and with the sufficient amount of metabolism of regular exercise, your nutrition, fat can be dissolved. Yeah, good. I think uh, we have come across, there are so many who have shared how uh, after drinking the water, uh, it really helps them in uh, lower, lowering down their cholesterol. There are, there are so yeah, many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this thing is something, see, this is where we are a little careful in answering these questions. The reason is because the moment you say that cholesterol is reducing, they immediately, their mindset is, I drink this water, cholesterol should come, they will stop all the medication. And finally, when they land up in a problem, doctor will say, I told you to take cholesterol medicine, you didn't take it. So we are not going to comment there, but definitely the metabolism increases when you drink terras water. That is for 100%. The moment metabolism increases, your cholesterol will come down. Yes, definitely it will happen. But we have to be a little careful when you're telling people with cholesterol and people consuming the water, guide them that take the water for being healthy, you know. And if cholesterol comes down, it's a bonus. Lah. That's it. I think that also depends on the quantity, right? Correct. Daily. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There are some who say, oh, I have drank a lot. And when you ask them how much, they say, yes, I have drank a lot. I have drank more than 1.5 liters. So I don't think that is enough, right, doctor? More than 1.5 liters is not at all sufficient. You know, if you're a 50 kgs person, is around two and a half liters you need to drink. Hmm. Average, you know. Yes. Uh, another question, can this water help for those kidney transpa transplant people? Sorry. Kidney transplant. Oh. Okay, fine. Now what we are talking about, kidney transplant, liver transplant, lung transplant, heart transplant, we can be any transplant, okay? Now, the person has been transplanted with one kidney, right? Kidney has been transplanted. Good enough? Now, the other part of the body, they do, they also need water, isn't it? Like your lungs, your brain, your all the other parts. Definitely they need water. Now, when you compare to the other water, this water is definitely much, much better because as I told you, it has got an antibacterial effect, antiviral effect. So definitely if a person has already undergone a, whatever the operation they have undergone and they're going to drink this water, definitely it will help them. But there is a little caution I would advise is 
the moment after the operation immediately they can't be drinking three to four liters of this particular water they need to start with 500 ml of water slowly increase it to 1000 then 1500 because your body needs to get adapted to the terahertz water that's all that's the only criteria otherwise definitely they can consume this water okay thank you doctor and the last one uh, from frankie group it says uh, doctor i would like to seek for your advice on fatty liver besides drinking terrace water what supplements or jab uh, would you advise for better recovery Can you repeat the question? Uh, this, uh, this gentleman asked for your advice on fatty liver. Liver, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, if you're looking at fatty liver, one of the main reasons for fatty liver is because of your fructose. The artificial fructose, which we all are consuming without our knowledge. You can you 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 call the corn uh, corn soup corn uh, corn uh, sugars. Most of your processed food has got the corn sugar. Now this is the the more amount of fructose goes inside your body, the more problem we are going to face. Now the more problem is the more your liver will become fatty because too much of sugar inside your body. What will happen to the sugar? The sugar needs to be converted into fat. Stored. So here, right from your food habits, then coming back to your liver, what kind of liver? Okay, what kind of supplement are you supposed to take? Number one, your liver needs. There are three stages of uh, cleansing which happens in your liver. Stage one, stage two, and stage three. Okay. Now, just stage one of liver cleansing, ah, uh, it needs thirty-five vitamins. Three five. I see. Yes. So. Stage two requires another 30 and stage three requires another 30. So how many vitamins do you need? You need a minimum of 30 vitamins. So it is not just one vitamin we are talking, but definitely I would require, I would like to guide you is number one. There is something called Niruri, N-I-R-U-R-I, Niruri. It is a way they can go on Google in the, uh, your uh, Google search. N-I-R-U-R-I, Niruri. Now, this is a plant very good for your liver. And this plant, uh, my grandmother used to grind it and give it to me, especially when you used to have jaundice. Those days I'm talking 30, 40 years ago. So they used to grind it and then we used to supposed to eat that particular uh, leaf. But today this Niruri is available as a uh, powder form, organic is available so they can consume it. Other than that, they need to take consume a lot of B-complex, B12. Mm -hmm. B12 plays a very, very important role in uh, metabolism of the liver. And most of us have a vitamin B12 deficiency. So we need to look at a little difference. So for this particular beautiful soul, I would recommend ask them to take Niruri powder regularly for at least three months. That will help the liver to change its situation from the present. But at the end of the day, they need to still change their food habits, their lifestyle, less of fatty food and uh, processed food, regular exercise, all these they have to do. But more than that, of course, they can call me. La, I need, because if it's going to be a medical handling, I need to talk to them. Okay, good. Thank you, doctor. And uh, there's this uh, lady us saying, uh, doctor, he said he resonate or scan the water three times scan the water three times uh oh sorry the cooking oil three times cooking oil is a minimum three times you have to resonate because it takes a little longer time so minimum three times and uh, the next part is it i see the volume of oil increase in the bottle oh is it i don't know <laughs> No, probably the molecular size of the oil, uh, it becomes smaller and then probably it will expand. I think so. Uh, I, I really don't know much of the physics, what exactly happened there. I okay. think so when it becomes a smaller molecule, uh, it will expand. But the benefit is uh, if uh, they are using uh, three liters of water for one month, when you resonate it, you will probably use it for 
one month at 10 days. It, yeah, that means the usage of the oil is lesser. Okay, that's good. Wow. And doctor, uh, someone says sugar is acid feeding the bacteria that causes diseases. Of course, sugar feeds it's your acidic. bacteria, sugar feeds your cancer cells. Oh, I see. Sugar is very, very, and in the sugar, you know, very important I need to share is there are eight types of sugars in the body, eight. Eight types. Ah, so you know only one, right? You know only glucose. Everybody is only checking the glucose, right? Who is checking the fructose? I think if we start checking fructose, then we'll exactly know what is a problem. But until today, nobody has done a checking for your fructose level in your body because that is right now not done. Mm -hmm. Because our consumption of fructose also is very high, you know, especially if you're drinking, going and drinking all your uh, uh, KFC or McDonald's, your fructose level will be very high. Wow. That in turn converts your uh, sugar into fat. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, that's all for all the questions, doctor. Oh, there's one from uh, our friend here, Mohammad Ismail. So, alang saya, apa yang menyebabkan kenaikan drastik bacaan glukos bagi yang menghidap penyakit diabetes terus naik melebihi seratus? Doktor, mengesahkan dia kurang garam, kurang air dalam badan sedangkan dia minum air teras berterusan. Complication. Complication. Doctor, do you understand bahasa Malaysia? I understand but not fully lah. Oh. But I understand that uh, glucose bagi yang uh, penyakit diabetes terus. Uh, and then the, reading, the reading to 100 more than 100 and the doctor say he he lacks of salt lack of water but still he's drinking terahertz water no what's happening is if you're looking at the our medical fraternity law basically uh, we don't have a system where we check the dehydration we don't what we do is the moment you come to us and say your tongue is dry and then you know when we check the signs and then we see that your uh, lips are dry and you know and your sunken eyeballs all this there then we know your dehydration immediately will put you on IV fluids but normally we don't diagnose a person with dehydration normally we don't unless you come and tell us you have diarrhea then you have vomiting then only we think of it so here what is happening is Many times when you go to the regular uh, medical doctor, of course, they whatever they their understanding, they will treat you. But if you are looking at good health, it is something different. And then it all starts from the basic, your food habits, your day-to-day -day activities. What food do you eat? Do you consume a lot of non-vegetarian, a lot of oily food, a lot of garam? You know, the normal white salt, you cannot be taking a lot of white salt, yes. white sugar. All these you need to cut down. Then only slowly things will change and uh, what is happening is just because a person is consuming water uh, like see there is another question here doctor i'm consuming the water for eight months and my yes. blood pressure yes. become higher 160 by 90 correct now now this situation is definitely uh, uh, someone how do we answer this question this person is drinking the water and the blood pressure is going up so what what do we do then now this is where as a doctor what i would look at is now, if at all, if you, are a, if you have a piping system in your home, if your piping system is rusted, what will you do? You need to replace the piping system, right? Now, in the same way, we do have saluron, right? Our, our, our piping system, the blood vessels are there, right? And when you are 50 plus, 60 plus age, your vessels are not very strong. There is no glutathione in it. There is no collagen in it. There is no vitamin C in it. There is no uh, tryptophan in it. The vitamins are not there. So your, this one is not strong enough. So there will be atherosclerosis happening. Atherosclerosis is your vessels are stiff. If your vessels are stiff, your blood pressure will be high. How the water will go and help them? Water will not be able to help them. So this is where we need to go a little more deeper. That is why I say, please do not drink water for a disease. You should drink water for your healthy situation. 
but by chance your drinking water your bp goes down very good but if the bp is not going down that means you need to look into a much more deeper problem what is that what is happening how old are you all these will come into that is when i can talk to them personally and give some guidance what to do okay i think that depends on also on the quantity again right of course mm -hmm. uh i have i have a friend she is uh, from johor a retired teacher so uh she she went over to singapore last year to to look after the daughters uh because uh, the doctor gave her a baby and then i think she is too stressed and after around 5 months then she came back her bp shoot up 180 to 200 and uh, actually she has started drinking the terras water for 5 6 months and she she did ask why i'm consuming the terras water and then my my bp shoot up and even the sugar level but thank god that uh, she did go go back to the doctor for check up and uh, i told her i say you how much water i still ask like doctor say you know every time uh, the the quantity the amount of terras water that we 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 consume each day and so she she tried to drink more and also she also with the advice from her doctor she start to take the medication and after about one month and also like doctors she she is in doctors zoom also and she heard doctors talk about fasting so she did try fasting also for a week then uh recently she told me everything has come back to normal she is very happy it all depends on individual madam lee we we won't yes. be able to tell you like you give 10 people the same terras what all the 10 will have the same uh, uh, results we do not know even 10 blood pressure patients and you give terras water it will be different different response yes yes so it's always better we go individually and then we uh, we, yes. we should be able to handle it yeah anyway thank you very much madam lee thank you It's almost thank you, one of us thank you very you. much see you uh, next week Thank you doctor So uh